Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage lifelike F unit from the 1970s. This was a locomotive which I don't actually own. It belongs to my local hobby shop, and they picked it up in some sort of an estate sale, tested it, and it turned out not to be a runner. So I offered to fix it up, and uh, unfortunately, it seems like there's a problem with the gearbox. It's slipping or something along those lines, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. But I figured we'll have a go with it and see if we can get this thing riding the rails again. It's certainly by no means a terrific engine. I, somebody tried to, I think, give it some sort of a military paint scheme and uh, it's kind of rough. And it looks like it's been scraped up pretty bad over the years. So it's not a fantastic locomotive. But uh, we'll see if we can put some life back into it. I'll quickly just show all of you what it's doing right now. It's nothing too crazy, but if we give it a little bit of power, you can hear the motor is revving up, but... Uh, it's not going and you can hear there's definitely something off with the gearbox. So uh, yeah, not so great. So we'll see if we can crack this thing open and figure out what's going on with it. So I'm not going to attempt to open this thing up. Um, I'm not super familiar with this era of lifelike locomotives. They were developed at some point uh, in the 70s and they were actually based off a late Varney drive. I find they're a little bit harder to work on than many of their later models. But uh, let's see if we can get this one opened up. And here we are inside. I bet if we lift that up, we can remove this for easier access. And what's interesting is that these gears seem to be working okay, but... Okay, I think I see what's going on. These are sliding around a little bit, and it's possible this is actually slipping. Yeah, you can see if this goes far enough forward, it slips out of bounds. So it's possible this has just slid over a little bit. But uh, this is not turning as well as it could. Like, I'm not sure. Yeah, that gear is actually slipping quite a bit. So it's possible this gearbox is jammed up. So we're going to try to get that open and, you know, clean it out. It probably needs fresh oil. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no kidding. There is a lot of dirt in there. Lots of dust and... Yeah, there's some pretty nasty old oil in there. There's no way that's lubricating anymore. This is the exact reason you always want to open this stuff up if you don't know the history of a locomotive, because in all likelihood, it might not have ever been maintained since it left the factory. It could have the original oil in it, just like this one clearly does. And over the years, too, uh, in most cases, dust and hair, all sorts of things work their way in the gearbox, and this is what will destroy motors. You know, this puts a lot of strain on the drive, so you need to uh, get all that stuff out. Put some fresh oil in them and uh, usually gets these things going quite a bit better. So we're going to do just that with this one. All right, so with the parts all cleaned up and uh, everything looking a lot better, I think we can start to reassemble and re-lubricate this locomotive. Hopefully this will have fixed a lot of the problems. I was really surprised to see that uh, everything was that dirty. It's certainly not the worst one I've ever seen, but uh, it's far from the best, that's for sure. So we'll just get that back in there. I'm pretty sure this is how it went. So just looking over this, I'm wondering if these, uh, the two black pieces here are actually supposed to be cushions to prevent this from sliding around. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the worm gears. However, a model like this actually doesn't need a whole lot because these parts are all nylon, so they're pretty low friction. So with uh, just a little bit of lubricant, they should be okay. Now, I am noticing that the worm gears have slid out of place. 
So I'll try to move those back up. That might have been part of the problem because these both need to be about center. And I think that that's correct right there. I think I might have made some sort of a mistake here. Something looks a little off about that. So it is possible that I got this part backwards. So I'll try uh, turning that around, see if that makes any difference. I don't think I did because I'm pretty sure it has to go in this way for uh, that gear. We'll see. Oh, okay, I see what I did. I just didn't get it uh, positioned correctly. So we'll just uh, retighten that screw. And I think it's gonna be all right. Uh, it looks like those gears are making decent contact. Let's double check that everything's turning. You know, I'm just seeing too, this gear is out of place as well. Everything seems to be out of adjustment on this locomotive. All right, so now that everything seems to be turning properly, I just want to focus on the motor a little bit. All we really have to do is clean the commutator up. Unfortunately, Lifelike uh, did not make this super easy on these locomotives. So we'll try to get this brush out, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you have to desolder some stuff. I think I'll just try to feed this through. All right, that should work. The commutator actually looks very good. It doesn't really need that much cleaning, but we'll do it anyway. All right, with that all cleaned up, I think we can uh, put the motor back together. Well, it's now the next day. I really wanted to test this thing out last night, but unfortunately it was like 12 o'clock and I didn't want to wake everybody in the house up running one of these old loud locomotives from the 70s. So I decided I'd wait till today to test it out. I was, however, able to add a coupler because that's a pretty quiet thing to do. Anyways, let's get this thing on the track and see if our efforts have paid off. I'm really excited to see. I feel pretty good about it because I think the gearbox was primarily the problem. The motor seemed fine, but let's give it some power and see what happens here. <laughs> Look at that. We have got a runner. Wow. Look at her go. This thing is way better. Doesn't even hesitate. Absolutely fantastic. It's got some good speed. It seems to be running consistently. Let's test out the low speed here. Yeah, that's not that bad for an engine of its age. I mean, it is cogging a little bit, but I, I wouldn't expect any different from an engine like this. And uh, we got reverse, that's all good. So this thing uh, seems to be running really well. I think there's only one thing left to do and that's to have this thing haul a train. Now I was really hoping we were gonna be able to get this locomotive going again because back in the 70s for Christmas, my father got this awesome military train set and uh, there's so many cool cars on here. I'll uh, show them all to you. We've got this first one uh, featuring uh, Grader. We've got a supply car. We've got this really cool cannon. This thing is just awesome. You can see it actually uh, swivels if you uh, do that. As a kid, I was blown away by that thing. And uh, then we've got a troop car and a truck with ordnance on it. So yeah, it's a pretty awesome train. And I figured since we're restoring a military locomotive, it would be great to get it out. So anyways, let's take this thing for a run around the layout.
Well, folks, I think that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm absolutely thrilled with how this locomotive turned out. I was really unsure if we were able, going to be able to get it going again just because the gears, you know, could have been stripped. But uh, luckily, we were kind of lucky, and it just turned out to be uh, quite dirty. So with a little bit of cleaning, it brought this locomotive right back to life. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed, and with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.